Some of you were wondering why the jasmine mannequin doesn't have a head. This is the final part of the Jazz of the Artist armor build. We're adding all the lights. I've only had a little bit of experience with electronics, so this build was a great way for me to try out different lighting methods. Come along on this adventure as I try not to burn myself or light the costume on fire. Electronics are still a bit of a mystery to me. I'll link some articles in the description that have great explanations about how this magic system works. The only push button switches I had were too bulky for the forearm pieces. Instead of using those, I harvested a switch from a pre-made push-button light. We were given a bunch of these lights and we're not using them anymore. They're great practice for electronic projects. I cut a little plastic circle that will fit into the forearm where the switch will be. The existing wires and soldered connection looked fine, so I stripped the wires and hot glued the switch in place. The exposed wires were completely covered in hot glue, which is an insulator. The first forearm piece has a flashlight looking beam. I just needed one white LED for the circuit. The color of the LED does matter since they tend to need different voltages and resistors. If your voltage is too high, the LED will burn out. I decided to pull an LED off the existing light to use for my single beam flashlight. The smaller squiggle is the positive side, but I always double checked. I used two AAA batteries. The pre-made light uses three batteries, but I don't need this light to be crazy bright and three volts should still be enough to work. Also, our rechargeable batteries are actually less voltage, so that's something to keep in mind while testing. I did play around with a multimeter to double check voltages. I'll link an article that goes over how to use one, but basically you touch the magic wands to either side of the part you want to test and you'll get the voltage running through that part. The downside to reusing this little LED was the short leads were a pain to solder. I covered the connection with hot glue so it would never move again. The switch was soldered on the positive side before the power went from the battery through the LED. This is Bill's awesome soldering station which really helped with my poor soldering skills. I cut out a little chunk of foam in the button cover and used a little hot glue to attach it to the actual button. I cut a piece of plastic to hold the LED straight and backed the light with aluminum tape. Sorry, I mean aluminum. A sanded piece of PETG plastic was glued into the front of the light and I tested how far away I wanted the light to sit. In Jazz's reference, the lights are a little bit blue around the edges. I mixed up some Kratex fluorescent paint, which is really transparent, and covered the back surface. The hot spot of the white LED should still look mostly white, and the area around the light should be more blue. Then the light and battery holder were glued into the foam. And this side was done! I didn't use a resistor since I think the LED is 3 volts and the battery is about the same. Plus, I'm a rebel and I live on the wild side. In our stash of black magic supplies, I found some white LEDs that are a bit brighter than the ones I harvested. They also have longer leads, so they should be easier to attach. But who am I kidding? I still need way more practice before any of this is easy. The left forearm has the same kind of switch, but the light panel needs more than one LED. I decided to light the edge of one side and hopefully spread the light across the whole panel. I used four LEDs connected in parallel, this way if one of the lights died, the others would continue to work. There wasn't much room in the forearm for lights. All the wires had to be kept short and flat. The inside of the panel was painted with transparent blue and I added aluminum tape to the sides. To bounce the light around, a foam panel with more tape covered the entire back. This made a huge difference and the lighting looked more even. Certainly not perfect, but better. For the glowing V on the chest armor, I investigated using white LED strips. These are 12 volt, but still work on 9 volt batteries. They just aren't quite as bright. Could I have used one of these LED strips for the light panel I just made? I think so. The 9 volt battery case is only a little bigger than a AAA battery case, so it would have fit. I would have bought a more beefy push button switch though, 
or at least used a resistor. I don't know what the little switch was rated, but it could have burned out at 9 volts. For example, these switches are good up to 30 volts. I was getting some brush strokes with my blue paint, so for the V symbol, I switched to an airbrush. I tried to leave the center of the V more white. This way it would look nice even without the lights on. These lights are going to face straight out of the V. In order to not notice the individual light bright spots, they need to be an inch or more away from the plastic. This LED strip can be cut at certain spots to shorten the strip or for abrupt angle changes. Heat shrink tubing helps protect soldered connections, but I kept accidentally shrinking my tubing with the solder heat. Whoops. The battery and wires only need to be on one side of the strip. The positive and negative connections are right next to each other. These ones already had solder on them too. I just tinned the wire, pressed it to the connection, and heated the area with the iron. I wanted to add more aluminum tape, but there are exposed metal connections in this LED strip. I made sure to cover them all with electrical tape before adding the metallic layer. So I learned too late that having wrinkles in the aluminum tape is bad. It's hard to see on camera, but you can see some of the wrinkles in person. They catch the light at different angles. The battery pack got a custom foam case and a Velcro cover. You can see a little bit of the tape wrinkles in this shot. It's actually a cool crystal energy effect, if that's what you're going for. It was time for the back color tubes. Paint doesn't like to stick to this kind of plastic, but I did find some old studio lighting gels. I could put the gels on the outside of the tubes, but they're too reflective. I was worried about them picking up the green screen color in the VR setup. I ordered different colors of LED strips for each tube. These ones are a warm white, which are close to yellow. I rolled up some parchment paper, which works great for diffusing lights, and lined the inside of the tubes. This helped spread out the light, but the lights still need to be suspended toward the center of the tube. These LED strips have a water protective covering on the surface, which is kind of nice. I had all the right gel colors except purple, so I overlapped the red and the blue and combined it with some super pretty purple lights. Thin PVC tubing was used for the LED strip supports. The adhesive backing was peeled off and wrapped around the tube, and the ends were secured with hot glue. I planned on snaking the wires through the back armor. The wires were pulled through the back of the tubes and would be joined together later. The purple and blue tubes have wires coming out of the top, and the red and yellow are the opposite, since those tubes are flipped. There's quite a few lights on this circuit, and I was afraid a 9-volt battery wouldn't last very long. So I ordered a 12-volt rechargeable battery pack. This one is designed for LED strips and comes with a wall charger. The tube lights will be a little brighter in this setup too. I stripped the wire by cutting down the center, revealing the positive and negative connections. The battery pack was secured to the lower back armor. That area had plenty of room and wasn't touching the back of the mannequin. Hot glue permanently attached the tubes to the back armor. Then all the wires were joined together. And thankfully, the lights still work. 
The foam attachments were screwed onto the tubes and the build was finally, finally done. The lighting in this project could have been completed in so many different ways resulting in different effects. I went over what I learned and some reasons for some of my choices in a blog post over on our website. Go check that out for more information. Thank you for watching the Jazz of Yardis costume build. I appreciate your patience with the build construction. It ended up being a really fun challenge. I learned a lot and I hope you learned some fun techniques along the way. Thank you Jazz of for designing this armor and asking us to build it for you. The box of armor is on its way to Australia and I'll hopefully get there someday. Thanks again for watching and stick around for more prop and costume builds. We've got some really cool plans for the future that we're excited to share with you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.